Here's the solution to homework set number 6 for ECE 376. The first problem, I want to find out how long it takes to read the analog input. So what I'm going to do is count on port C. That's going to make port C go high, low, high, low. The time in the middle is going to be however long this takes, my A to D read. So what that looks like, I've got it programmed on here. Port C is counting really, really fast. And if I take a speaker and connect to the pin, I can't hear it. If I keep on going down each pin, ooh, that's painful. Each one's divided by two. Nine sixty hertz. Or eighty. Try to get it in a range that you can read. Turn that off because that was kind of annoying. Uh, if I took pin 4, I got 963 hertz. Each pin is divided by 2, so going back to pin 0, pin 0 was 16 times that, 15 kilohertz, which is why I couldn't hear it. Uh, the number of clocks between interrupts then is 10 million divided by 2 divided by frequency, 324 clocks um, per toggle. That's actually more like 321 clocks because it takes about 3 clocks to count on port C and then do a go to. Uh, but roughly, it's about 32 microseconds to do an A to D read, found experimentally. On to problem number two. In problem two, I have a voltage divider. Suppose this reads 813 on the A to D reading. What's that mean in terms of voltage, resistance, and temperature? Well, on the A to D, 0 reads to 0 volts, 1023 reads as 5 volts. So the voltage is this percentage of full scale, full scale is 5 volts, is 3.974 volts. So with the pick, I can have a voltmeter. If I have a voltage divider, I can calculate the resistance. By voltage division, the voltage is RT over 100 plus RT times 5. Solving backwards is the voltage over 5 minus the voltage times 1000 ohms, 3871 ohms. That also works with the raw A to D score. It's the raw A to D reading, 813 over full scale minus the reading times 1000 ohms. Same answer. To get the temperature, if I have a thermistor attached, I know the resistance, I can solve for T. So solving, I get minus 2.9 degrees Celsius. I can also measure temperature with the analog input. Problem three is do something with the analog input. Um, what I chose was a watering system. What I want to do is have the analog input specify the time that I'm going to water between 0 and 102 seconds and button RB0. When I press RB0, it takes the analog reading, interprets that as 0 to 102.3 seconds, turns on port C for that much time, displaying the time as it counts down every 0.1 second. When it gets to 0, then waits for the RB0 for the new reading. So here's the C code, I'll kind of leave for you to, to write yourself. Here's a flowchart. <clears throat> I'm going to initialize the analog input. Each time I loop, I'm going to read the analog input, saving that as time with turning off port C. As soon as I hit RB0, I break out of that loop, go down here. I'll turn on the lights on port C, decrement time, wait 100 milliseconds, repeat until I get to zero. Once I get to zero, I then come back out and repeat. And here's what it looks like. So here's my watering system. With the analog input, I can change the time from 0 to 202.3 seconds. I make it 11.2. I can then hit this button. It starts to count down. Lights on port C are turned on. Presumably I'm now watering my garden. When I get to zero seconds, I'm done watering that plant, ready to go over to the next plant. Next plant, hit the button. I'll water for 11.2 seconds. After that time, the lights turn off. So that's one use of the analog input. I can use it just as a convenient way to input a number that I can adjust. Uh, problem six is data collection. 
I can use my pick to collect voltages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the capacitance of a 47 microfarad capacitor. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read port A pin 1. Here's my 47 microfarad capacitor going to ground. I'll take this pin and tie it to 5 volts, charge it up to 5 volts, then let it discharge. To do that, I have to pull off the jumper over here, because if I don't do that, I'm discharging through the 2.2K resistor and the 100K resistor. I'll show you what happens if you do that. Take that off, I'm just discharging through the 100K resistor. So to illustrate that, here's what's happening. This is the voltage that I'm reading. I'm going to connect to 5 volts, which I read right here, clear my data, and then release. And my capacitor's not connected. So if you have no capacitance, quickly it goes to zero. Let's try that again. Charge up to 5 volts. Clear the data. Release. And you can watch the capacitor discharge. When you're done, I can send the data to the clipboard. Then in MATLAB, which I probably should have started up before, I can paste the data. Data is start of matrix, paste, end of matrix. Here's my voltage plotted every 100 milliseconds. Nice, clean exponential decay. Uh, kind of mentioned, if you don't take off the jumper on the LEDs, so we'll do that. Uh, right here, you can see that as I charge it up to 5 volts, the LED turns on. When I take it off, the LED gets dimmer. I'm discharging some of the current through the LED, and this is what that looks like. So we'll go back over here, clear data, start my data collection. Time passes. Send that data to the clipboard. I get kind of a weird response. It's very quick decay then a slow decay. This quick decay is I'm discharging through the 2.2K resistor to your LED. This is the turn-on voltage for the LED, about 1.6 volts. Once the LED turns off, then I just have the 100K resistor for the discharge. So you got to take out that jumper. Um, so anyway, did that three times, and here's my three results. To convert that to a number, um, this decays exponentially. If I want to convert that to a straight line, I can take the log of both sides. So log of voltage, the log of A times B is log of A plus log of B. The log of V0 minus T over RC. So I should get a straight line if I plot log of voltage versus time. And sure enough, I get a straight line. The slope is 1 over RC. To find the slope, I can use least squares. Uh, set my basis as time and 1. Now do a least squares curve fit. Least squares curve fit is inverse of B transpose B, B transpose log of voltage times Y. This is Y right here. And I get two numbers. This is 1 over RC. Uh, for the second run, third run, I did three runs. I should get three numbers. I can now calculate what the capacitance is. I know the capacitor is 100 kilo ohms. So the capacitor is 1 over my constant times 100K, I get 46.9 microfarads, 46.90, 46.73. Did three different readings, I got three different numbers. This is where statistics comes into play. That'll be the homework for next week. I've got three different readings. What does that tell you? Well, what that tells you is I can give you my 90% confidence interval. I can't tell you what the capacitor is exactly. But I can tell you at 90% certain what it actually is based upon these readings. Um, that's coming up with a t-test. So that's homework set number 7 for ECE 376.